this book is the best book to start out with if you're just starting with nonfiction. It completely changed my worldview. And hey friends, have you ever thought about picking up a nonfiction book, but are you being held back by this voice in your head? <laughs> nonfiction? That's boring. I bet there's no unicorns in it. Or maybe this one? Nonfiction? That's for smart people. And you're dumb. Well, stop listening to the voices in your head, because they're lying. They're always lying. Also, there's probably a non-fiction book about unicorns anyway. I mean, there's even a non-fiction book about beheading. There's one about trash. There's even one about salt. Something for everyone. So give in to your curiosity and read some non-fiction. I used to almost only read YA and fantasy books, but about two years ago, I discovered the wonderful world of non-fiction and I completely fell in love. So today, I'm gonna talk about where to begin when you wanna read non-fiction and give some recommendations. But first, why should you read nonfiction? Here are some great reasons. It reminds you that learning is fun and voluntary and not something you do only because you have to get a college degree because that's what society expects from you and you've lost all your intrinsic motivation. It can help you better understand other people's point of view. It can prevent reader's fatigue by switching up your content. These are 3D glasses from the cinema. It's a great way to learn more about subjects that interest you, that is more affordable and accessible than proper education, and more reliable than random internet articles. Whoa, I feel tech. So now let's talk about where to start when you want to pick up a nonfiction book. There are so many nonfiction books on so many different topics and some are more accessible if you don't have any knowledge on the subject yet, other books are more advanced. Where do you begin? My first tip is for when you already kind of know what topic you're interested in. So what you're gonna do is go to a large bookstore, a real one, not on the internet because you want to be able to look at the table of contents. So just take this as an excuse to go to a bookstore. The larger bookstores tend to have a very wide variety of nonfiction books and the aisles will be categorized based on the topic. So that makes it super easy to find an aisle full of books that you're interested in. Just take a look around, take a look at the table of contents because that will give a very quick overview of what is going to be discussed in the book. And after a bit of browsing, I'm sure you will have found a book that piques your interest. My second Second tip is for those of you who really don't know where to start, this was me, go to a small commercial bookstore, like those kind of bookstores that you find in train stations, bookstores that don't have a lot of books but mostly stock the new releases and the bestsellers. That's where you want to be. Go to the little nonfiction aisle that they probably do have and here you will find all the nonfiction books that are current bestsellers so you already know that they have been approved by a lot of people, that they're very accessible and you also know that they will be relevant to current affairs. Take a little look around and then just pick one that piques your interest the most. Pretty much all the nonfiction books that I read I find by looking at the little nonfiction section in those small commercial bookstores. It's easy because there's only a small selection so you don't feel overwhelmed by the sheer amount of choice, right? And then the third tip is just like a little small extra one and that is to find a book by recommendation. If you already listen to podcasts or watch TV shows or follow certain people that talk about specific topics, usually these people will recommend books or talk about books that they get their information from. Take note of those books that they mention because they might also be very interesting to you. So those were all my tips on where to find a nonfiction book that you will specifically really like, but despite that, I still am going to give you a few recommendations. There are so many types of nonfiction books, way too many for me to go through all of them, but I'm just gonna go through a few of the most popular, I think, categories of nonfiction and talk about a book that I would recommend. The first category is biographies. This is a great step in if you want to get into nonfiction, biographies read like fiction because they usually tend to have a story, except it's someone's life story. For me, the first nonfiction book that I ever read was an autobiography, and I would recommend it to everyone. And that is In Order to Live by Yami Park. It's about a woman who fled from North Korea, and she talks about her experience living in North Korea, her experience with human trafficking, and then her experience trying to adjust to living in another country. This is the kind of book that I think will be interesting to anyone, even if you don't normally read nonfiction, because it does read like a story, except it's real, and that makes it even more impactful. If you have a person that you really look up to, like a celebrity, they probably have a biography or an audio, auto, 
autobiography of some sorts so definitely just look that up. The next category is popular science books. This is a very vague wide category and I think some of the other books that I'm gonna mention could technically fall under this category but it's basically just mostly books that are written by academics and they write about their science in a way that's accessible to everyone. This is personally my favorite type. You could find any topic that you're interested in but if you, like me, are very interested in like science and like space and shit, <laughs> I highly recommend the books by Stephen Hawking. I've personally only read this one. This is his last book, The Brief Answers to Big Questions. He is so good at writing about intricate topics like black holes and astrophysics and just makes it accessible and understandable to anyone. I really want to read his other books as well, especially A Brief History of Time, which I think is his most well-known book. So if you've been a little hesitant to pick up one of his books, I highly recommend just trying it. I, I know that this one at least is very easy to read. And then a little hot tip, sometimes it's a little difficult to distinguish which books are like reliable and legit and which ones are a little mm -mm. look at the back of the book or just go through the book and see if they cite their sources usually at the back there will be a large bibliography this is not the case for every book like this one does not cite any sources it's fine with this one because he's mostly talking about his own experience and his own research but i've read non-fiction books where the author like talks about psychological studies and they don't cite anything be a little wary of that. Just a little tip there. Then the next category is politics and society. There are myriad books on relevant social issues like feminism, climate change, what the heck are we gonna do with artificial intelligence. I also really like these types of books because they kind of give you an insight in what's going on in the world that's a little more in-depth than just watching the news or reading random internet articles. I don't have any specific recommendations and that is because I highly recommend you to just read books in your own language from your own country. If I'm gonna read a book on like societal issues it's gonna be Dutch and it's gonna be about the Netherlands. Obviously it's good to know what's going on in other countries but just be aware you know if you're gonna read a book about feminism in America, all the data that they're gonna use is not gonna be relevant to you in your country if you live somewhere else. So this one's on you. Then the next category that I quickly want to dabble in is philosophy. Philosophy can sound a little bit daunting sometimes, but I think it's accessible to everyone because I think we all have some stupid I'm 14 and this is deep philosophical thoughts once in a while. And I just really want to recommend this book because I think if you're gonna get into philosophy the most accessible type of philosophy is existentialism because that's basically just a bunch of French dudes answering the question what's the meaning of life? I recommend At the Existentialist Cafe by Sarah Bakewell. This is just a super nice overview of all of these existential philosophers. Not only does she do a really great job at explaining all of their philosophical philosophical thoughts. She also talks about biographical information on their lives and that's really nice because that gives you way more insight in what in their lives caused and influenced their philosophical thoughts which makes it easier to remember and understand. Obviously all the like original philosophical essays would also count as nonfiction, but I do not recommend starting with that. And then the last category that I want to mention is culture and history. Another kind of vague category. There's this one podcast that is super popular. I think it's called Hardcore History. They have a book now out as well, but I specifically wanted to recommend this book because I think this book is the best book to start out with if you're just starting with nonfiction. It completely changed my worldview and it was also one of the very first nonfiction books that I read and that is Sapiens by Yuval Noah Harari. I know this is a cliche, you've probably heard like anyone, everyone all the time talking about this, but it's worth the hype, okay, trust me. This is a brief history of mankind, but it's unlike what you learn in like high school. It's focused on humans and human civilization and human behavior. And that really brings our current society and your own life in perspective. Whenever we think that we can't change things because we believe that things just are that way, we usually can change them because things never are just that way, right? If there's one book from this video that you're gonna read, 
please make it this one. So those are all the books that I wanted to recommend today, but I mostly hope that with the tips that I gave, you're also now capable of finding other books that you might find interesting. Let me know if you already enjoy reading nonfiction or if you have kind of been wary about it. And if you have any favorite nonfiction books for beginners that you want to recommend, leave a comment down below so that the comment section will also become kind of a recommendation list. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you soon in another one. Goodbye!